When it comes to learning Verilog, many of the popular tools like Xilinx, Vivado, Intel Quartus Prime, and Model Sim are often the first names that come to mind. However, these tools can be quite heavy, usually more than 20 gigabytes and in some cases near to 100 gigabytes, consuming significant system resources, and they may not always be free or fully compatible with the latest versions of Windows, such as Windows 11. If your primary goal is to learn Verilog without the overhead of these resource-intensive tools, there's a much simpler solution. In this video, we'll explore Icarus Verilog, a lightweight tool that's incredibly easy to install, occupies just a few hundred megabytes including all dependencies, and is fully compatible with Windows 11. A couple of hundreds of megabytes for Icarus Verilog versus more than 20 gigabytes in case of many commercial tools is a huge difference. Icarus Verilog is the perfect choice for anyone looking to master Verilog without the hassle. We will see how we can download and install the Icarus Verilog, how to write Verilog code in it, how to write the test bench for our design, and also see the signal waveforms. We will also integrate this with Visual Studio Code IDE for smooth and professional code writing experience. So let's get started. To install Icarus Verilog, one prerequisite is having the C compiler installed on your system. If you have the C compiler installed on your system, you can continue for the next steps. If C compiler is not installed, please refer to the previous video. The link is provided in the description, in which we installed the C compiler and integrated that with Visual Studio Code. Now assuming you have the C compiler installed, let's see how we can install Icarus Verilog. I will show you two methods. The first is simply using the installer, and second method is by using MSYS2. MSYS2 is a software installation and building platform for Windows. MSYS2 can handle the dependencies and updates very effectively. Let's see the first method, which is not the best method. Go to Google and search for Icarus Verilog. Open the first link. Here you can see different versions to download. Let's go for the latest stable release. And this is just of 10.5 megabytes. The download has started. Click to run the installer. Follow the simple steps. It will be installed in the C drive. This is asking if we want to install GTK Wave, which is used to show the signal waveform. Of course we need that. It has been installed. And since Icarus Verilog is all command-based tool, so let's open the command prompt. Type CMD in Windows search bar. We can simply write iVerilog to see if Icarus Verilog has been installed or not. See, it does not recognize this command. The reason is that Icarus Verilog was installed in the C drive, and inside iVerilog there is a folder bin, inside which we have this iVerilog application. So we need to tell Windows about this path so that it is accessible in the whole system. Let's copy this path. Go to Windows search bar and type environment variables. Click environment variables. Under the lower section of system variables, you can find this variable path. Double click to edit this. Click new to add a new path and paste the address we copied a while ago. Hit OK a couple of times. Now open the command prompt again. Type the command iVerilog. And now we see some information about iVerilog, which means iVerilog is executed. We can also view the version of iVerilog installed by the command iVerilog space hyphen V. And it shows the details about the installed version, and here you can see the version number. Now I will show the second method to install Icarus Verilog by using MSYS2. So first you should have MSYS2 installed, and for that you can follow the previous video. The link is also given in the description. With MSYS2 installed, go to search bar and look for MSYS2 MinGW64. It is all command-based interface. The first step is always updating the package databases using Pacman Package Manager. Use the command pacman space hyphen SYU. 
It is asking if we want to install the update. Simply press Y. Now to install Icarus Verilog, we will use this command. I will copy it and paste that here. It found the package and asking for installation. Icarus Verilog has been installed. We also need to install GTK Wave for the signal waveforms. For that, we will use another command. GTK Wave has also been installed. Let's verify by writing the command iVerilog base dash V. We have the version information and see this is the latest version of Icarus Verilog. The command we used will automatically install the latest version. We can also verify if GTK Wave has been installed with the command GTK Wave. It opens the GTK Wave window, which means it has been installed, and next we are going to see how to write code and use this window for the waveforms. Now it is time to write the codes. First, we will see the method with simple text files, and then we will integrate this with Visual Studio Code IDE for better experience. Let's say, this is the folder where I want to keep my code files, so let's create a new text file. For the testing purposes, let's name it as test.v, where the extension v is for the Verilog files. One very important point here is that you go to View tab and select this option to view the file name extension. You see, the file extension is still txt, so just remove that .txt part so that the file extension become .v. Now open the file in Notepad where we can type the code. I will copy a very basic code for a module which does nothing and simply displays the Hello World message on screen. We need to compile and run the code. For that, you can open the Windows command prompt by writing CMD in Windows search bar, but if you have MSYS2, then better open that. The first step will be changing the directory to the one having the source file. Use the command cd to change directory followed by the path of the folder. The directory has been changed. Now to compile the file test.v, which we have in this directory, we will use the command iVerilog space hyphen o, where o means the output file, meaning we want to specify the output file. I will use the same name for the output file as of the source file, that is test, and the extension will be .vvp then a space followed by the name of the source file, which is test.v. The output file extension is .vvp, which is an intermediate file containing the compiled simulation code. Let's hit enter. There is no error meaning the source file has been compiled correctly. If we go to the folder, you can see the output file, test.vvp generated here. The next step is running the vvp file. For that, use the command vvp space the name of the file, which is test.vvp. See here the output hello world is displayed. So basic testing has been verified and now let's do something meaningful and also create the test bench and the waveforms. For that, we will code the full adder circuit. Let's create a file full adder.v. I will copy the code for full adder module. It has three inputs and two outputs. The outputs sum and carry are as per the full adder equations. The important thing I want to mention that name of the module is full underscore adder, while the file name is full adder in camel casing without any space. The file name and the module names are different. To compile and use the file, we will have to use the file name while to use the module in some other module like the test bench, we will use the module name. The naming conventions are just personal preferences. Just to mention beforehand, while working with a Verilog project, you would need to have three to four different files, as we will see shortly. And I prefer to use the names in a way that the files are organized together inside the folder. You will see what I mean. Let's compile the full adder file and name the output file as fulladder.vvp. The VVP file has been created. Let's run the VVP file. 
there is no output since we did not display anything. Now let's do the next important step of creating and executing the test bench for the full adder. A test bench in Verilog is another Verilog program which verifies the functionality of the design. For example, the full adder we just created. So let's create the Verilog file for the test bench and name it as full adder tb.v. I will copy a code. See the name of this module. I specified is tb underscore full underscore adder, which is different from the file name. See this line carefully. Since we need to test the full adder design, so here we are instantiating a full adder module. Recall the name of the file was full adder.v, but the name of the module inside the file was full underscore adder. So as I mentioned at that time, in the code we would use the name of the module as given inside the file and not the file name itself. The DUT is just the variable name. It could be anything. The DUT means design under test. Then here we have the block where we test different input values. We are displaying a simple message on screen. Then we are specifying the variables A, B, C, Ian, sum, and carryout to be displayed using the monitor function. The monitor function displays all the values specified whenever there is some change in any of the variable values specified. Then, we are setting different values of the inputs and will see the output values. See this hash 10 means that there will be a delay of 10 time units. So what is time unit? We specified that in the first line as one nanosecond, which means all time units are one nanosecond. And this picosecond specifies the precision as one picosecond. So this means there will be a delay of 10 nanoseconds before the next value of the three inputs is assigned. The first step for the test bench will be compiling it. So let's do that and name the output file same as the test bench file name, but with extension .vcd. vcd is value change dump file that logs signal value changes over time during a Verilog simulation for waveform analysis and debugging. As the source file, we will have to specify the test bench file, of course, but also the full adder module file. There is no error, and we have the VCD file generated in the folder. Now we can run this VCD file. We have the display message, and then the five variables we specified in the monitor function every time some value is updated. You can verify for any set of three inputs. The carry and sum are correct. We got the correct output of the test bench, but we need to view the signal values as waveform. For that, we first need one change in the test bench code. Before applying different simulation values, we need a couple of lines. Let me copy those lines. What we are doing in this block is basically specifying a file where the signal values will be saved. The first is the dump file function, where the name of the file should be specified that will hold the values of different variables. We have specified the file name vcd, which is same as the intended output file of the test bench. Then we use the dump wars function, and we have specified this very module of the test bench, meaning all variables of this test bench will be dumped. Once again, notice that while referring to the test bench module in code, we need to use the name of the module as specified in the code. We will compile the test bench again since the code has been updated. Use up arrow key to get the previous commands executed. The module has been compiled. Let's run the VCD file. See, we have one extra line displayed here which mentions the dump file as well. But we are interested to view the signal waveforms. For that, write the command GTK wave. A window has opened, we need to open the output VCD file in this window. For that, we can drag that VCD file onto the GTK wave window. It shows the module name, and under that we have the design variable DUT. From this signal list, double-click the signals you want to view. All signals have been selected. The time scale is in picoseconds, that's why we see the flat lines here. Click inside the waveform window, and then you can use zoom buttons here. The best will be this Fit to Window button. We had five sets of values with a delay of 10 nanoseconds, and hence now the time axis is till 50 nanoseconds and shows the next value after each 10 nanoseconds. 
So that was how we work with Icarus Verilog. But you see, coding on the text files is very cumbersome, and it will be good if we could code this in some IDE like Visual Studio Code. So let's see that. Before that, have a quick look that the full adder example we executed generated four files, and because of the naming convention we used, the four files are organized together. That's just a personal preference. Now let's open the Visual Studio Code. If you don't have the Visual Studio Code installed, please refer to the previous video where we have gone through the complete process of downloading and configuring the Visual Studio Code. I will open the same folder where we have the code files. You can see the code is simple text at the moment. To add the Verilog support, go to this extension tab and search for Verilog. You will see a bunch of extensions. You can choose any of these based on ratings and downloads. I will select this one. It is installed, and now let's see the code. You can see the change. Now it is not a simple text but a proper program. You see we get the proper IntelliSense help as well. To run the code, we will have to use the commands on the terminal. For that, go to Terminal from the menu bar. And here we can write the same commands as we used earlier. Let's quickly run the test Verilog file, which prints Hello World. I hope you liked the video and will find this tool quite easy and helpful. Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for your time.